Hello, good morning to you once again. Thank you so much for staying on the AM show. That was quite an interesting discussion Roland had uh, with Sam George there. But it's now time to talk elections. We want to hear your voice. We'd like you to share your thoughts with us. It's the voter's voice. Today we are asking you, will you vote? May imagine some men to abandon the same. Utu abeni we will be a bar or back on the mla as we near be siswa. I want some mini shop, mini baby ameti. I want one ameti yaden. Etu yaden. Etu wadi. But metu wadi ano. Nimpani a bar or so. Ye be jaimo. Na ma yaden matu ab. Ma yaden matu wadi. But ebe we ask no. Anya sani ebe huno. Ene wabab kame he. I want to pay me a few pounds. As you can't hold a yet, see, and I'm my campaign. Adding your votes. As someone goes to Suya, I want to pay me. In my margins, I feel dear, meant to abba. Initially, I decided not to vote, but due to some one or two things, I changed my mind to vote again. So, this is about. Me, I meant to abba. I didn't know I meant to abba. I had to abba, sir. Me, me, to my kufu, or buy it. At a mess by, I had to abba, or call it. Omuni na ba, obi e ba, okuta ni politics or deba. Insha Allah say, oba anka membu onu, anka gana membu constitution or sanka shisha tuwa. Sanka president bi a ba, iya we ye si school dan, iya we ye yika akwai. Nanka obi a ba onu se we ni aye. Nanso ano ba, ano nini shisha ya ano di ope. Eno ano ba ba, anso nyu ano nini sika, eno ade kwa ya sadi ano. Yeah, abo. Why are you going to vote? Oh, I'm a citizen, so I need to vote. It's my right, so I have to go and vote. You're happy with how the country is run? You're happy with how the country is run? Oh, I'm not too happy, but you just have to cope. No, please. Why, why are you not going to vote? I just don't want to vote, because I don't see the reason why I should vote. But, but you're a citizen, you have a responsibility to vote. Yes, I know, I know. But... You're not, you're not going to. I just don't want. To. Yes, I will vote. Okay, why will you vote? Uh -huh. I will vote because it's the right for me to vote. Yeah, to elect the person who can rule the the country. That's why. So there you have it. Some people sharing their thoughts with us or their position when it comes to this year's election, whether they'll vote or not. Well, it's time to discuss the issue of voter turnout here in Ghana because it's, it's been a problem that many think tanks have discussed over the years. Why is it that so many Ghanaians don't like to vote? Is it just simply an issue of being apolitical, like we saw with that lady? She simply doesn't want to vote. Or it is a, a thing of you know, disappointment, like the first woman we had. Well, I've been joined by Dr. Kwame uh, Sa Asante. He's a political scientist. Thank you so much for joining the program this morning. I, I want to believe you heard uh, the, the people who spoke to us on whether they will vote this year. Yes, I did hear them. Mm. And uh, it's normal in politics, mm. very, very normal. Mm. But there are good reasons why people will not want to vote. Mm. Yes, one is the issue of dissatisfaction. Um, politics is a business that people expect to benefit from. If you or you study podcast science, you are taught about the rational choice perspective. The benefit people can derive from politics, and that is why they vote. So if the person will not derive any benefit from uh, the exercise of his franchise, I'm afraid he will not vote. Another issue has to do with uh, the dissatisfaction that is associated with uh, politics, sometimes failed promises and whatnot. It's one of the reasons that put people off in the area of politics or voting for that matter. Mm. And then uh, there is also the problem of increased corruption in the political system. When the ordinary voter sees that uh, there is high level of corruption, people go there, amass wealth in politics, and in no time uh, the, there is uh, improvement in their lives. Uh, to the detriment of those who put them into office. Mm. Obviously, those individuals would not be interested in politics. And of course, it is also a means of political protest. You protest against certain things. 
that you are not happy with. So you don't want to go and cast your votes and endorse somebody. Yes, and can do it in various forms. One of it could be that when they cast uh, wrong ballots, they can go there okay. and then vote. Mm. Yes, and then cast a wrong ba ballot. Sometimes it can be a blank ballot. They don't want to endorse anybody. And sometimes they will vote in a way that at the end of the day, it will invalidate the whole process. So these are some of the things. Can we argue that people's decision not to vote in itself, it's a vote on the electoral processes and their confidence or lack of it? Oh, yes. It is a fact that uh, voting is an expression of the will of the individual. It can be for good or for bad. So if you want to vote, you want to tell you that, yes, I am in for the process. But if he doesn't want to vote, he's telling you that, yes, I am not going to be associated myself with what the process. Mm. And that is uh, one of the, the means by which you can gauge the mood of the voter. Uh, since 2014, we saw a decline in, in voter turnout. For the president in, in 2014, we saw 85.6%. Then in 2018, 69.52. So that was a decline. Then it rose uh, in two, 2012. Um, no, in 2016, I beg your pardon, actually dropped to 63.83%. The largest we've seen within uh, this recent period has to do with the referendum. That was 84.0%. Does it in any way uh, tell that people are less interested in partisan politics, for example? Looking at the referendum and the uh, presidential statistics. Uh, you can't conclude on that. Mm. that. Uh, with uh, certainty, simply because this is what, just one-off okay. uh, issue. And remember, we don't get a referendum all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's a one-off uh, incident. Mm. So that cannot be the good background to, to, to assess the situation. Uh, but if you take it generally, you realize that sometimes there are ups and downs in terms of voter turnout. Uh, we've seen times where people go there massively to go and vote and there are times that people do not want to show interest mm. uh, but these are problems that are associated with democracies especially mm. uh, young democracies such as ours uh, i'm sure uh, with time when we have institutions such as uh, ncc um, if they are able to step up their game they will be able to inculcate the values uh political values in people to as to why they should be uh, be voting in mm. elections. Mm. Uh, these type of education, uh, we don't tend to have them in this country. Even if they exist, they are not effective where people see the need to go and vote. Mm. In certain countries, if you want to whip up the sentiments and in order to get more people to vote, okay. they have also introduced compulsory voting. And you can see that in Latin American countries, some European countries, and even some African countries, where by which you can also um, encourage people to go and exercise their mm. franchise is to mm. motivate them mm. and then also fix the problems that they are protesting about, get them solved, and that will, uh, you know, embolden them or mm. encourage them mm. uh, to be able to participate in uh, politics. Mm. Doc, I'll come back to you on the bit of reference to this happening in other countries, but we've been joined by uh, Sheikh Aramea Shaibu, he's chairman of Kodeo. Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, and uh, we know that Kodeo has been doing some work with regards to this year's election. You observed uh, the voter registration exercise. There were reports of violence. And we know that violence in particular is one reason some people do not want to go to voting centers. They just don't want to be caught up in any drama and any surprise. Do you think that this year's election, looking at what happened during the voter registration mm -hmm. exercise, uh, could record low voter turnout? Um, thank you so much for the opportunity. Um, contrary um, to that, uh, we are mindful of the fact that we have seen a, little, a bit of uh, enthusiasm during the 
voter registration exercise. In fact, regardless of the violence, there is a certain euphoria about um, the registration. It seemed to me that once people have excitement about registration, the logic connects that they also want to want to vote. Mm. Of course, there are those who argue that people uh, place uh, value on the possession of the card itself. But mm. that we have seen the enthusiasm as it has gone. Uh, we are hoping that we will see a rise in the turnout, uh, depending on the kind of education we engage in. If you listen to the debate as it is going now, um, um, the excitement is growing. Uh, and uh, political parties are moving around. Uh, you can. Um, trying to organize their members. So I'm of the hope that we will see an exciting election mm -hmm. uh, depending on the education we engage in. Mm. All right, uh, Doctor, um, you, earlier you spoke of vo low voter turnout and it not being uh, unique to Ghana's democracy. But I, I, is there anything like a safe margin? Obviously, we can't record 100% voter turnout due to instances like illness and death. But is there a margin where we can say, at this level, it is perfect, it is good when you have this percentage of voters turning out on an election day to vote? Obviously, when you go beyond 50%, we are saying that uh, the bulk of the people are excited and ready to go and vote. But we expect that you get higher margins so that uh, pluses and minuses that are associated with elections, such as spoiled ballots and all that, can be taken care of. So that at the end of the day, the person who will be elected will have the legitimacy of the people. You will be recognized and accepted by the people. Mm. There are some who also say, look, I can't leave my job on an election day to go and stand in the queue. After all, what do these politicians give me at the end of the day? I would rather work and get some money into my pocket. Do you think we should begin to consider, like it happens in other jurisdictions, early voting or digital voting for such persons so that we can cover you know, a, 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 a larger percentage of the voter population? I think any means of getting people into the electoral system is very, very important because Pericle says that uh, people who do not want to be part of politics and for that matter elections, they are not only a danger to society, but useless human beings uh, because decisions that are made out of politics affect everybody. Mm. So you expect more people to be part of that decision so that they own the process. And at the end of the day, when such decisions come on attack, they are ready to defend it. So anything that will show up the number, uh, it's welcome. When you say anything, what, are, are there any examples you like I'm to share? I'm talking about any process that will get more people to go into the electoral process to go mm. and vote. If it's early voting, if it's proxy and what have you, uh, it should be fine. And it's, it, is, our, is our electoral system ready for that? Oh, if we study the system, you see, these decisions are not taken in a day. You need to do serious research to be able to arrive at something that will stand the test of time. And I'm sure the stakeholders or the institution charged with the responsibility of handling elections in this country, if they put their acts together, we should be able to, to arrive at something that's meaningful for everybody. So that at the end of the day, the, the frontiers of our uh, electoral system will get strengthened mm. and all of us will be a beneficiary of such a process. Sheikh, let me come to you. During the just-ended voter registration exercise, we heard from the Electoral Commission, uh, its Director of Electoral Services, uh, Mr. Uh, Kwaku, Srebo Kwaku. Now, he said that the political parties did not adhere to laid out plans that they had all agreed to follow, In, for example, in case of a descent. And so, we recorded issues of violence, and he believes that if they had followed that plan, we could have avoided that. Going into the elections, what would your, um, well, let me say, your advice be as political parties and what they do with regards to its impact on people's decision to vote or not? I, I think 
time has come when politicians will have to redefine their purpose for engaging in political um, context. If they are able to do so, that is only when they will be able to, one, they themselves undertake to educate their um, supporters and maybe even beyond as to the whys of elections. Secondly, um, they should be able to also um, bring to the fore um, the kind of programs that they have and how it also uh, answers to the needs of the people who are going to vote to, uh, for them. Um, they should also engage in an education that helps their supporters to reject the mindset of violence as a means of attaining or obtaining political power. Um, if the politicians are genuine enough in taking to this path of political contestation, then they would have done us a good service. They are able to win election, and they, in their conscience, would have also won election based on their conscience. But any, any deviation from this will be an election of selfishness where unsuspecting um, and vulnerable supporters of political parties are reduced into tools of violence. And then violence as a means of attaining political power becomes the norm. And I think that that is wrong. So that is what I think political parties should do. Secondly, uh, we should bring on board the NCCE. In fact, I say strongly that this is a very important uh, national democratic institution that has the duty to educate us on our civic responsibilities and rights. They are, in, in, in my estimation, they are not in, uh, enough uh, empowered with the resources to do this job. Mm. And so you do not see them much in the forefront of educating the citizenry to understand their responsibility. Mm. We can, it's, it's only when we do this that we can help supporters, particularly the youth, to reject and to disapprove Sorry, Sheikh, we missed your the ending part of your submission. Yes, I mean, what I'm saying is probably um, we should bring the NCCE strongly mm -hmm. on board. Mm -hmm. NCCE is a very important national democratic institution put in place to educate citizenry on our rights and responsibilities, including including the the why of election. Okay. Now, it appears Yes, so they need to be resourced enough so that from now they begin to do their, execute their mandate mm. of this kind of uh, education. And I'm sure when we all do and civil society come on board, we will be able to rid our political space of the violence that characterize our electionary season. We need to work on that. Mm. Uh, and you, you, you've spoken of the NCC, governments have come and gone. And there seems not to be any uh, proper investment in the in the in the civic uh, education aspect of the of the NCC. Doctor uh, Asa Asante, is it that politicians know the power that educating the voting public uh, would bring them, or is just that we simply don't understand why we should invest in that bit of our politics? So I think we are well aware of uh, the benefits of educating the electorate mm. to do their civic responsibilities. But do politicians? Efforts. But do politicians really? That's a question I'm asking. Do they really want the voting public to have that power and to understand I, the I power believe, they have? I believe uh, they, they 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 have interest in that, but uh, the implementation as to uh, committing resources into such exercise. Time and again, we've had NCC complaining about resources to fund the activities. We have other institutions to, which are uh, virtually non-existent. They are supposed to perform the role that we expect them to do in order to uh, encourage uh, people uh, to vote. These things are missing. Apart from that, um, civil society groups also have a responsibility in here to educate the people 
about their rights and responsibilities towards elections or polit politics for that matter. We need to put all this thing in proper perspective and let it work if we want to really strengthen our democracy and make it what fair. Mm. In conclusion, we had in, in the Vox Pop we played earlier, we heard from one gentleman who made some sort of a submission. He said that uh, they voted for, or he had voted for previous president, and everybody comes and does what he wants, and so there's no continuity in development. And he used the word constitution, but I'm sure what he wanted to say was that there should be some sort of uh, policy or plan that allows us to develop uh, continuously. Just in conclusion, I'd, I'd like you to comment on his submission briefly and whether or not that at all will have any impact on people's decision to vote. Yes, one of the problems with democracies, especially young ones, is the issue of reversal, where uh, people feel that they don't get uh, the, the dividends of democracy and they are prepared to forget about the whole process. It's one of the things that we are seeing in this uh, uh, interview, where people are getting dissatisfied. The state must be quick in this direction and help us to address this problem. Because if you look at countries, uh, especially those in Latin America, one of the things that uh, have bothered them a lot in terms of problems is the democratic reversals, where people feel that uh, the, democracy, uh, the democracies that they are having is not yielding the needed results. For that matter, they prefer to have authoritarian regimes. That is something we cannot uh, accept in this country, for which reason we need to up our game. Um, if we look at continuity of programs, uh, the Constitution makes it clear under Article 35 8 that government project programs must be continued uh, by uh, succeeding uh, governments. Uh, we don't need to abandon them. And uh, any program worth the assault, we should be able to uh, allow it to roll mm -hmm. by continuing the process that earlier government have started. This is the way that the ordinary man will get the benefits of democracy and want to hold on to that system to let it endure. Grateful that you could join us this morning. Dr. Kwame Asasante is a political scientist. We've also been engaging chairman of the Coalition of Domestic Election Observers, Sheikh Arimeya Shaibu. Thank you, gentlemen. Enjoy the rest of your day. You're still watching the AM show. And still to come, the Okada debate to legalize or not. Well, we've been to town. We've spoken to some Okada riders. We'll also be speaking to the National Road Safety Authority to stay.